an artist. Now what? Did you ever wonder what it's like to have three first names? Well, this guy knows. His name's John Tyler Christopher, and not only is he really cool, he knows how to make money. <laughs> I want to make some money! Move! And I'm not exaggerating. John Tyler Christopher is a professional comic book artist. He is a cover artist, and he makes money through comics in ways that you might have not have thought of. Might have not have thought of. <laughs> might have not have thought of. Might have thought of thought of. I had this interview with him at Fan Expo, and he told me his entire business strategy. And it was stuff at that time I've never heard before. So I thought this was a classic interview that you needed to hear. Especially when we're trying to make a living with our artwork, sometimes we just don't know what to do. And John Tyler Christopher, he enlightens us with his business know-how. So make sure you listen to this interview right now. This is my interview with John Tyler Christopher. I'm here with my friend, John Tyler Christopher. He's drinking a coffee. The man with three first names. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm really good, man. I'm doing really well, yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, John is a very, very talented artist, and he's here with me. I'm actually right beside him here at Fan Expo. John, why don't you tell our viewers, what are the things that you... Oh, first of all, what are you working on right now? Um, currently, I do the action figure variants for Marvel Comics. Um, I also do, so I would like to do the ones for Star Wars, the actual Marvel line, Secret Wars, things like that. Um, do a lot of work for Disney as well. Um, I'm currently doing the box art also for Hasbro's Marvel Legends line. So uh, between that and having my own business, I'm keeping myself pretty busy, you know? Yeah. You sound like a very busy guy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long have you been uh, uh, doing art as a career? Um, I've been doing art since uh, 2002 professionally, kind of. Um, I broke into the industry in um, doing advertising work. Uh, I, I went to Purdue University. I studied theoretical math and philosophy, like whatever. Uh, I was told I was never going to be able to make it as an artist by the people in my small little town. Um, from there, I was like, hey, man, you know, I really still want to pursue this. I studied 3D animation, absolutely hated it. Um, so I kind of became the concept artist out at the Art Institute of Seattle. Um, from there, though, I started doing a lot of graphic design work and advertising. and. It's funny because one of the things I learned in the dream was always to be cut working comics. Like I wanted to be a comic. I wanted to draw the Marvel guide to the universe, Marvel universe. So, the, you know, the old one where they're like standing in the three, the turnarounds and stuff like that. And um, so that was always the dream, but I never knew how to get there. And I went a, like a little bit of a unique path and it's different than most traditional artists that break into comics. So, uh, out of uh, 3D animation school, I started working in advertising, and I worked um, small agencies. I was doing work for plumbing companies, designing logos and business cards and that kind of stuff. And from there, I started working at the agencies and started working like with Ford. Um, I was the guy that designed those stupid little flyers when you walk into the Home Depot that are like made of newspaper. That guy right here. But as silly as it was, and as like not what I wanted to do, quote unquote, it offered me some really unique opportunities. Um, one paid really well. It, I've never been a starving artist. Um, so it paid well, clock in and out, got good benefits. On top of that, I learned multiple things. I learned how to sell. I learned how to commu communicate with my art to merchandise and sell a product. I learned how to talk to art directors. I learned how to talk to clients, all of these things that have benefited me tremendously in working with Marvel and Disney and other the entertainment quote unquote companies, because you can, I can talk to them about what are we trying to sell? How are we doing this? What's the point of this? Who are we trying to market this towards? And they love those kind of conversations because it's one thing to be able to be like, it's a cool picture of Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. It's another one to say, all right, well, we're going to focus this one on 13 to 18 year old girls. Um, well, we should probably try and focus it more with this or let's change the angle. And it's been really beneficial with that. And um, I've always really strove to be kind of ahead of the game when it comes to marketing and advertising. Like there's a million and one artists out there that are so much better than me, but that's not my angle. My angle is I try to be a smarter artist than everyone else. Tell me, what is your day to day like, uh, like uh, working as an artist? Like what should we like? And, and uh, how do you keep so busy to support your family? Um, well, uh, I wake up in the morning, um, take my kids into daycare and, uh, I swing into my, I have an office that's literally like two blocks from my house. Um, I go in there and you know, it varies. Like, um, it used to be a case where 
Marvel would tell me. I was like maybe two weeks ahead of schedule. Like I know what's going on. Uh, I'm now booked through January, for example, right now. So like I know this week I'm going to walk in and it's, I'm going to work on Deadpool. And I'm going to work on Deadpool and I'm going to work on Han Solo. And that's what I got for my week. So I make sure, you know, I plan out. Um, it used to be where I'd have to do more thumbnails. But because of these action figures, um, it's just kind of like they're, they know what it's going to look like at the end, right? So other than the character, so I just start penciling, I'll ink start to color the pieces, um, submit them into Marvel, wait to hear back on any edits and feedback, make the edits if they need them, turn them in, man. It's, it's a very streamlined process. Um, I try and only work like, you know, like maybe eight o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes I have to go back in like for young artists. That's definitely something advice I'd give is like, be prepared not to sleep sometime. Like you got to put in the hours, man, you know? So how did you get your first job uh, at Marvel? Ooh. Okay. So this is kind of weird. Um, back in like 2002, 2003, maybe around, around that time, mid two thousands. Um, I started, I moved to Atlanta for the job with the home Depot and I started going to cons with a lot of the guys at studio revolver. I joined studio revolver at uh, Dexter vines, George Gianti, Jason Pearson, amazing dudes, you know? Um, and I started being the guy that would come to them at cons and they'd give me like a quarter of a table and I'd, I'd, I have like my little print and be like, Oh, this is cool. But I started looking around. This is where the advert, why I, I really push advertising, marketing, looking at business of art to young, young kids. I looked around and at that time, everyone did sketches and commissions. That's how you generated revenue at a con. I looked and I said, maybe 20% of the people at the con had one print to sell and they sold it at 30 to $40 at a high premium price point. You're alienating so much of the audience, especially at this time, women were starting to come to shows, people that maybe weren't really hardcore comic book fans. So I said, man, I'm going to go and make a ton of prints to try and appeal to a larger base of people, sell them at a $10 price point to undercut the market, but also nice profit margin for myself. In the process, I'm able to sell larger volumes instead of one high price point ticket. So I was going to these cons and I was selling out daily. And not only that, but from an advertising and marketing standpoint, because everyone was only selling one print, I was the guy that had 50,000 prints walking around. People were walking around with my artwork as a billboard. So at the time, Top Cow, I was out in uh, Emerald City Con. People were walking by and they literally, Top Cow, the editor, uh, Philip Soblick, who's just an amazing editor, super great guy. So I guess people kept walking by Philip and he eventually was like, okay, stop. All I am seeing is people walking around with this art, this person's art, like from an Emma Frost to a, you know, um, some D and D stuff. Like what, who is this person? And all these fans are like, oh my God, he's this guy. He's selling his prints. Like they're only $10 over there. Like you should go check it out. So Philip walked over and he sees a line of people at my booth and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm selling prints, man. Like it's this, like no one else is doing this. So at that process, at that point, Phil's like, well, dude, do you want to draw a witchblade? Hell yeah. So it was like, it was being prepared for the moment when an opportunity arises, like to be able to capitalize on it. So from there, the first cover I did a witchblade, I wrote this, like, it was all about balance and duality. And so I wrote this like war and peace novella about my process for the cover. Well, Top Cow was like, Hey, would you mind like writing this and fleshing it out step by step? And Comic Book Resources actually wrote an article called How to Create a Witchblade Cover for my first ever comic. As the story goes, that was seen by someone at Marvel and by a gentleman by the name of George Ballard, who's become a like, super dear friend of mine. Um, and as the story goes, uh, he literally just called me up and he's like, hey, saw you that Witchblade thing. You want to draw Iron Man? And away it went. But it's that's something else that's really important for young artists is you look around at a con, everyone's doing the same thing, right? Like, Everyone's yelling now. Sometimes if you whisper, whispering gets you more attention than yelling over people. When everyone's whispering, that's when it's time to yell. Zig when everyone zags. Now, like, I stopped doing shows, um, predominantly because everyone's selling prints now, right? Like, m I'm not special anymore. No one cares what I'm doing at a con. I'm just another voice. I realized, hey, I'm doing these variant covers for different um, retailers, can I do my own retail variant Marvel? And Marvel's like, no one's ever asked us this question. So I worked on creating a new revenue stream for myself 
waiting for the opportunity to strike. And when I started doing the Star Wars action figures, it was like, well, can I do a Boba Fett? And they're like, well, no one's asked, but sure, why not, man? Bought the rights to do the Boba Fett book, paid everything that needed to be done. And now a ton of artists are doing that now. That's the, the point is like, it's all about seeing an opportunity, seeing what's not being done. Because if you're following the crowd, dude, no one's, you need to be a leader, be an innovator, create your own art. Don't be like, oh, I just, I redid a picture of Sp Spider-Man, you know, from so-and-so. Like, yeah, they've seen that. That's not special. Make something unique. Be ahead of the game, and not only artistically, but also on a financial and a business side. That's where you get noticed. And that's how you can, like, you, you're innovating, you know, not imitating. And that's what it's all about, man. That's some fantastic advice for, for all our artists, for sure, for sure. Like, in a lot of, in a lot of my artists, they want to get, break into comic books. They want to break into doing, like, box art and all that kind of stuff. What kind of advice would you give to, uh, to them, aside from the great advice you've already given to them? Um, well, as far as, like, the, the box art thing, like, that kind of arose from working with Marvel and being being progressive with, with stuff. Um, you know, like, I, I, when I was asked to do the action figure stuff... Um, you know, I was able to capitalize on it and do it and make it happen. And um, that was, I was asked, to, Marvel asked me if I wanted to be a spokesperson uh, for an event with Samsung. And all I was asked to do was, hey, can you go take some picture, like draw a picture on a Samsung Galaxy, we'll post it on the at the party, and maybe take some pictures with, with, with uh, some reporters. And I was like, I can, but that seems really like lame, right? Like that's, no, who cares? So... I looked at it as an opportunity. Like I was taking photos with with uh, reporters, and I was like drawing Iron Man photo bombing the pictures, looking for new ways to do something different. And and able to do that, Samsung was really happy. So when Marvel was asked for like, hey, we need some of this dude like new box art for such and such a place, they're like, talk to John. He's going to look at a new way of doing it. Now, I'm not breaking the mold by doing the Legends line, but some of the other things I worked on with with Hasbro um, was like I. Even if it was normal, I was pushing, trying to push the envelope because it never hurts to try something new. Right. So if like an art director asks you to draw Spider-Man, like you can do that. And that's like, don't, don't be like, well, I thought it'd be cooler if it was Hulk. Cause like, they're not paying you to draw Hulk. They're paying you to draw Spider-Man and just Spider-Man. But maybe say, here's Spider-Man. Just so you know, I've maybe made some friends. If you worked in advertising, maybe in like digital media and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be cool if we add, added like an augmented reality function to it? Like something that would be unique, you know, some, offer, if they ask for $10 worth of something, give them $20, man. And the, you're going to make a mark. And being especially young in the industry and breaking in, you know, it's a hungry man. It's a dog eat dog world in here, right? So like, you've always got to find ways to be ahead. And again, like I can't compete with a lot of the other talent out there. Like that's just not, I, I'm not that good of an artist, but I'm always that guy that's like, Hey, we could add a VR function to this. Hey, we could add an augmented reality. We could add a we could add a video game to this comic book cover. You know, you scan it in on your phone, and all of a sudden, you can actually fight Wolverine on the cover. Like things like that. Man, are they going to invest that kind of money in it? Maybe not. But I'm trying. I'm putting that kind of stuff out there. And that's what they love to see because that's progress. They might not be ready for that now, but five years from now, they might be ready. And when they're ready to jump on it, man you're the guy they're going to come to for it. Make your own opportunities. Fantastic. Great, great advice on innovation and everything. I personally learned a lot. Thanks. Thank you so much, John. I'm going to take some of those ideas, too. Cool. <laughs> it's gone, bro. It's gone. So before we end off, where can my viewers find you? You've been a wealth of knowledge for them. Where can they follow you? Um, well, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, Twitter at John, at John Tyler Chris. Um, Facebook, John Tyler Christopher. There's an art of one. I sometimes go on as well, but it's got my symbol thing. It's a rectangle. Um, I'm all over the internet, man. And I'm open. Like, uh, my email address is all over the web. Like hit me up. If you see me at a con, like I love talking about this. I love talking to students. I love if you have a, t but I love talking about how to do taxes. Like that's like, seriously, you know, like that's what this is about, man, because it's about building smarter artists and better business. Like, you don't need to be a starving artist, man. Like, don't do not do that. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic, um, what's it called, uh, information for all of us. And I, I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Well, well, John, man. please follow my man, John. And thank you. And we will see you later. Thank you so much to my friend, John Tyler Christopher. Make sure you follow him. And he dropped so much business knowledge on us. 
What was your favorite part of the interview? Let me know in the comments down below. And who else would you like me to interview? Who is your favorite artist? Why don't you let me know as well in the comments down below and I'll tell you why. I'm going to be doing a whole slew of brand new interviews as I relaunch the Box Office Artist Podcast. We will have a brand new interview every single week and we will clip out the best parts to make sure that all of your questions are answered. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a single episode and make sure that you subscribe to the entire James Ray's Media Network and I will be your best friend. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best. My name is James and I'll see you next time.